The 18th century landscape garden is Britain's unique contribution to European culture, and Hestercombe is one of the finest examples of this style to be found anywhere. A journey around the 35-acre landscape garden, set in a secret wooded valley, is a voyage of visual and sensual discovery. And whilst it may seem entirely natural, the whole landscape was actually meticulously planned by artist and designer Copleston War Bamfield, who lived at Hestercombe and created the garden between 1750 and 1786. It was laid out as a series of carefully orchestrated, idealized views, using the surrounding countryside as a borrowed backdrop. Each view was composed as if it were a landscape painting, hence the description, landscape garden. The inspiration for Banfield's views came from the paintings of three highly regarded 17th century artists, Claude Lorraine, Salvatore Rosa, and Gaspar Duguet. Their paintings captured half-imagined scenes of the Roman countryside with classical elements of temples, statuary, cascades and nymphs, many of which Bamfield strove to echo in the garden he created. He too, like the artists before him, wanted to evoke a vision of Arcadia, a heaven on earth in the garden. It was a popular ideal in the 18th century, when many of the wealthy traveled to Italy and fell under the spell of its classical influences. Being an artist himself, with many fine pictures to his name, it's not surprising that Bamfield acquired a reputation for applying his painterly eye to his garden design. The paintings he so admired are often described as capriccios, in that they were imagined views which included a number of classical elements in one scene. The first painting in the garden can be seen from the octagon summer house, where each window frames a different view. As visitors progress around the garden, other views open up, designed to be seen from within the buildings created to frame them. Some of the views could almost be stage sets, bounded by trees and animated by visitors. This is perhaps not surprising, since many of the early English landscape painters were also theatre scene painters. The garden was not just a visual experience, though. It was also designed to stimulate the emotions, just as the paintings did. This was in part achieved by introducing variety to the design, using contrasting spaces. Some areas, like this tunnel, dark and enclosed, others wide open and suffused with light. Changing textures also stimulate the emotions as the visitor moves from the calming influence of a smooth and gently unfolding landscape to the shock of the sublime achieved through encounters with precipitous drops and wild and rocky crags. Water in its many forms was a particularly good element for creating mood. The beauty of smooth and tranquil lakes the dark, brooding drama of deep pools, the light-hearted bubbling of murmuring streams, and romantic yet awe-inspiring gushing of waterfalls. Bamfield, like the artist Claude Lorraine, also harnessed light in its many guises to provoke the senses, positioning or placing features to capture the soft evening rays with great effect. And for example, playing early morning sunlight through lime trees by the time the journey has ended, visitors should feel they have been well and truly emotionally awoken. Through his own paintings, Bamfield was one of the few artists in the mid-18th century who recorded natural landscape. As a consequence, his paintings are a unique garden history reference and they have been invaluable in restoring this and other gardens of the period. The authentic restoration carried out at Hestercombe has made it possible to recreate Bamfield's remarkable picturesque landscape. As you explore the garden, see how many paintings you can discover.